Hi everyone, Sane Man here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Malcolm, and here's what he has to say. Hi Sandman, it feels like I've been going my own way for at least 10 years now. I just did not recognize my choice until I found your podcast on YouTube. Thank you for providing clarity into what has actually been my journey through life using instinctual intuition. Please address a question that's been nagging me for the last few years. I've noticed that many of my longtime male friends now consider me the unruly pal who is unreasonable and too good to settle down with one girl. Their wives and relatives often ask when I plan to start a family and why I haven't gotten married yet. It has gotten to the point now where I actually avoid friends that I have actually trusted and cared for for almost 20 years. It now feels like I'm the lone alpha and they've all turned into discontent pumpkins paying for women to raise their brood. I don't relate to them anymore and at times I actually feel guilty for avoiding them. Am I being a bad friend? In the end, I know my decision to limit exposure to them is benefiting me, but I'm also aware of the frustration from others. Maybe I'm the last alpha in my pack, and it's just time to move on. Best to you, Sandman, lone wolf of the rainforests. Well, Malcolm, thanks for your donation as well as your topic request. First of all, when a man is in a relationship and in love, we instinctually start to white knight for women, and it's not something that happens consciously. I think it's a hormonal thing where love lowers our testosterone and feminizes our mind to a certain extent. I know that scientifically a man's testosterone drops when he's in a long-term relationship, but as far as feminization of the mind, I actually haven't read any scientific studies on that particular idea. As for your old friends, Malcolm, they basically see you having your way with women and playing the field. Field, thus they see you as the bad guy because you're pumping and dumping instead of providing and protecting. Their wives are asking when you're going to get married and start having kids because they want to see if they should actually cut you off from your friendships or if there's so-called hope for you to become a blue pill mangina man. The women probably like you and want you around, but not if you influence their husbands in a less than stellar way. They're assessing the situation and probably asking your blue pill friends when you, their red pill friend, will actually take the blue pill. You're also deciding to avoid these friends, but you don't need to avoid them because eventually they will just avoid you, because their partners will pretty much command it. They might even start looking at you as a creepy dude that sits alone at the bar someday. That's the shaming language my dentist likes to use on me. He has a wife and two daughters, by the way, so his life must be all peaches and douchebag cream. You're not being a bad friend, but their wives are going to see you that way. Usually, from my experience, they choose to limit their interaction with you and not the other way around, with regards to your friends. The reason I know this is because I found myself on both sides of this fence. I was that blue pill man with red pill friends, and they were warning me about the dangers of the woman that I was with, yet I didn't want to hear them. My other blue pill friends and I would gang up on my red pill friend and tell him to basically just go out there, get into a long-term relationship, and over time, you'll learn to love a woman's emotional stench. And you'll just do as they say, and you'll be perfectly fine with it. You'll give up some of your freedoms, but you'll be fine with that as well. The problem is that being a blue pill man is like being a drug addict. You do whatever you can to justify your drug of choice, i.e. women. And because of that, it eventually becomes impossible to hang out with your non-junkie friends or red pill men. I have to commend you on wanting to pull the trigger and cut off your blue pill friends before they cut you off. My suggestion to you is to keep the lines of communication open because you never know when one of these guys is going to get divorced and need your sympathy and support. Right now, these friends might as well be dead to you, but you never know when they might come back from the dead. I remember back when I was a blue pill man convincing one of my red pill friends to get a girlfriend, and I remember how he cleaned up his life. Lost 50 pounds, became an independent, strong-willed man, and when he got into a relationship and eventually got married, he gained all that weight back because she liked it on him. And he went back to the man that he once was. It's incredible to see how a red pill man blossoms outside of a relationship, and it's even more incredible to see how badly he withers when he's in one. I think that women see this clearly, and that's why they want to surround their men with other blue pill men, because if they all become whipped at the same time, they don't actually notice what's happening to them. It's like invasion of the body snatchers, or invasion of the wallet and male spirit snatchers, and when you see your friends turn into pod people, you're far less likely to want to get married and have kids. Women must see how a man's mentality changes when he falls in love. They don't fall in love with us the same way that we fall in love with them, so when they see our personalities change, it's basically like going from a fully functioning human being into a zombie. Suddenly, it's like we're actually the snake and the woman is the snake charmer. Malcolm, when you see your friends become this way and you're not in love, of course it makes you actually not want to hang out with your friends anymore. It's like their IQ level has been knocked down 10 to 20%. In MGTOW, we often talk about how men have loyalty to their friends, their clan, their culture, and the in-group, while women are willing to screw over their own in-groups 
to basically get what they want. That's one of the reasons why I think men are feminized when they enter relationships because they're old friends, they're in-group, they basically no longer have any loyalty to them. Instead, their loyalty now lies with the woman, and women generally don't care about a man's loyalty to his friends. And that's why they promote this idea that he should basically stop socializing with his old friends. She doesn't even have to work that hard to cut him off from his friends. All the typical woman will have to do, with regards to the typical blue pill boyfriend, is to find ways to monopolize his free time with other couples. She's not cutting him off from his friends so much as she's replacing his friends with other couples and men, that are basically his new level of mental retardation. What happens is that women handicap us and turn us into the Rain Man. Look what happened to Tom Cruise when he got into a relationship and had a kid he basically jumped on a sofa on the Oprah show. Unfortunately for him, he's a serial monogamist and will probably be married to the fourth time in the next few years. But what does he care? He can afford to fail over and over again, and his movies will continue to make money so he can remain a blue pill man forever. The same goes for Steve Harvey. He reminds me of a less potent version of Richard Pryor. But even Richard Pryor was a blue pill kind of guy and he was married seven times. But there were actually five to ten year periods somewhere between those marriages where he actually wasn't with anyone. So he sobered up and probably went red pill for a while and then got punch drunk love yet again. He was probably a recovering blue pill vagina addict his entire life with constant relapses. He reached mainstream success in the 1970s when he was single, which I actually don't see as a coincidence. I think his multiple sclerosis later in life was also caused by the emotional stress that he suffered from all those failed relationships. The science also suggests that. So Malcolm, when your friends get divorced and are basically riding around in their Rain Man rascals, they might actually need your support. Just make sure you get out of there before they poop their diapers because, after all, if you had listened to them, you'd be riding a rascal next to them. Think of just letting them sit around in their soiled diapers as a sort of payback for trying to turn you into a mangina, or at the very least sitting around and not saying anything when their ex-wives try to shame you into basically getting you to have a relationship. There isn't much you can do with regards to helping blue pill men. Once they fall into that trance, you just try to keep the lines of communication open, and if they do ever need your help, offer to it as much as you can. It just sucks because, as you said, you actually have friends that you've had for 20 years. But people grow apart and change with time. Women, on the other hand, tend to form their friendships in their teens when they actually cement their personalities, and I know women that are in their 50s, 60s, and 70s that still have their friends from high school. With women, it's so much easier to keep their friends because when a woman gets into a relationship, she doesn't change to the point where all her friends hate her or her husband or boyfriend doesn't actually try to cut her off from her female friends. It's certainly a double standard that tends to favor women. But at the same time, women's friendships aren't really based on the same depth that men have. What are their friendships based on? Talking about how big their last boyfriend's penis was, or possibly how much of it they could shove into their pie hole without throwing up. Or perhaps how much of it she could take up her poop shoot. It's tragic because women get to keep their shallow friendships with their female friends, but at the same time they force the men in their lives through omission to give up their relationships with their buddies, and those ones are far more likely to mean something. Having blue pill friends isn't just limited to friends, but another part of it is family. This past Christmas, people finally stopped asking me when I was going to get married. I found that to be shocking and pleasant at the same time. Almost like a new form of shaming, where you've been written off entirely from the dating pool by your own family, and the shame is no longer about asking you when you're getting married, but instead about asking everyone else except you. I knew it was an attempt to single me out while actually not singling me out in the first place. That's the type of thing you should expect next, Malcolm. If and when your friends stop talking to you, don't look at it as if their female partners are cutting you off, but instead look at it as actually a shaming strategy to get you to feel single and lonely, so that you'll basically go out and find a girlfriend so you can get your friends back. The reason we made it this far with regards to evolutionary biology is because women became very efficient in manipulating men's feelings and getting us to do exactly what they want us to do. When I was younger, I didn't value the sports and celebrity culture when I was a child, and I would often get bullied to participate and if that didn't work, I would often get isolated, and I had to talk about what the other kids found important to be included in the circle once again. Eventually, I learned to be self-sufficient, and I got on the honor roll, built an attractive body using weights, and suddenly people wanted to include me into their petty little crowd of circles again. But I felt isolated and stayed away. You will be surprised, Malcolm, how quickly people that are ignoring you right now will accept you once you fall into the social order and bow down to peer pressure. That's what a person's teenage years are all about, including high school being forced to fall in line using peer pressure from adults and people your own age, 
or you're basically left all alone as an old man that no one wants to talk to at the bar. Ironically, it's the men that don't bow down to peer pressure, but instead went their own way that basically gave us optical theory, electricity, airplanes, and the theory of gravity, as well as radio and many other things that we enjoy today. To say that women are dream killers would be an understatement, because they're more like despotic peer pressure machines forcing us to conform to society, or they try to isolate us socially as if it were some sort of ultimate form of shit test. If we eat the isolation for breakfast and follow our dreams, then the glory goes to us. But the joke's on us, because even if you actually invent something amazing when our mind is free from gynocentrism, it usually gets subverted by a blue pill men and handed down to women anyway. We should invent things to free ourselves from gynocentrism and hopefully free our blue pill friends from it as well. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again, Malcolm, for your donation as well as your topic. Don't dump your blue pill friends because the women in their lives will just naturally fill their weekends, holidays, and other free time up with other groups of friends. They might also need you when they break up and get divorced. Then you'll basically have to share with them the reality of female nature. Also, don't forget to check out the MGTOW mystery link below because it's a doozy and please smash the like button as always. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the Rain Man retardation away. So enjoy the rest of your day and cheers.